called the bloke the tailor of Sonoma. The tailor. They've been staking out this art gallery of all places, Chroma Gallery it's called. They reckoned it was a safe house. That's what they said. And the tailor was some sort of mastermind. And I said, for what? And they said, <laughs> shut up and look. Shut up and look. They showed me this photograph and then some video. It was the bloke all right? So I looked for a bit and I said, who took this video? Shut up and they and said, look. shut up and look. It's crap, I said. Rubbish. They said, what is he doing here? What is he doing? And I looked at him. And they said he was the brains of the operation. Of what, I said. Never mind. And then the old light bulb went on. And I said, don't you know what he is? And they looked at me expecting some sort of revelation. He's an arts reporter. He's writing about the arts. Can't you see what's in front of your eyes? He's asking them questions. He's writing down what they say. He's looking at art. And I thought to myself, hmm, me. I didn't think there was any of them left. Arts reporter, they said. That's right, I said. I know it's unheard of, but straight up, he is. And they looked at each other, straightened their big fat bellies, and shuffled a bit. And I said, oh, last of the breed, he must be. Still, good that he's still pounding the streets, eh? So, can I go now? And they shook their heads and told me to f*** off out of it and stay away from their precinct. So I left. And we're with Dan Taylor. He's an arts and entertainment writer, a journalist of uh, a long and lengthy reputation here in Sonoma County, uh, mostly with the Press Democrat. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you. And I, it is interesting that we haven't actually discoursed much uh, being in the same market as we have for all these years. So. I've known so many people in Sonoma County for 30 years by telephone, and I'm still meeting them face to face <laughs> for the first time. So before we jumped in here, we saw a clip. Can you walk us through a little bit of what that was there on A Street? Uh, well, I was planning to do a, a, an informal canvas of A Street, the arts district in, uh, in Santa Rosa. SOFA, I guess they call it now. So, south, south, south of A Street, Street. Yeah. SOFA, yeah. And uh, I do an update there every year or two and because the restaurants co are constantly changing. And it's a very vibrant area with theater and art. And, oh, yeah, it's happening, yeah. Yeah. So I, I like to check in on it. I've done magazine articles for, we've had several magazines. Currently, we have Sonoma Magazine. Mm -hmm. And every, every year or two, I try to update readers on what's happening there. So I was just wandering around. I had arranged some interviews, and I was, uh, uh, we met in the art complex behind the Chroma Gallery, and we went to a uh, coffee shop. And he got stalked by John Moran. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I knew he was there. I've known John forever. Um, I don't know exactly when and where we met, but I'm sure he does. But uh, uh, we've worked together on a number of things. I think you guys probably met at the old Vic back in the day. Yeah, I was not much of an old Vic fan. Um, Who was, really? Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> the old Vic was mad at me because I didn't review their pantomimes. and. Uh, uh, I was spread so thin always from the time I got here. There's always so much more than we can do. So I just didn't, that, that was a small audience. And well, let's talk about when you got here. I know you're from Seattle, and I know you, your career is taking you kind of halfway across the United States and back. Yeah. How, describe that loop. How did you end up here from there? Oh, well. Well, the short form, the short form is that my uh, best jobs have come from classified ads in trade journals spotted by my wife. <laughs> and that is how, why I applied at the uh, Back when we had Press classifieds Democrat. and trade journals. Yeah. <laughs> well, EMP still exists, but it's online. Yeah. Editor and publisher. But, and that used to be the way you found jobs. Um, I was born in Pasadena. My dad mustered out of the Army and started a veterinary practice north of Seattle. I grew up in Seattle until my folks split, and then my wife, uh, my mother, became a teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my wife's a teacher too, and so is my daughter. Oh wow! And um, and so we were in small towns in Southwest Washington, and uh, I went to the University of Washington. Um, for J school or for yeah, yeah. I, no, I I made up my mind what I was going to do when I was about nineteen. Yeah. I wanted to be an arts journalist, and there really wasn't a major. You know, they didn't. You Specific, could take journalism. You know? Yeah, specifically an arts journalist, not a reporter. You know. No, I, I did that because I had to, right. to get a job, and that's why I've always had a job, is because I can report and edit, and I've done all those things. And I can cover a news story. I don't claim I'm the best, but I can do it. But why arts journalism specifically? What was I it? grew up with the arts. My parents were very much into music and art and, and uh, theater. They were active in community theater when I was a little boy. That's one of my earliest members, memories is mm -hmm. seeing them on stage. Um, uh, they, between them, they played a dozen or two instruments. Uh, uh, so you have this artistic household, but let me yeah. ask you, why then become an arts journalist and not an artist? Oh, lack of patience, probably. <laughs> I, I just like to be involved in everything. Yeah. And uh, by definition, a, journalism, a journalist is a generalist. Right. He knows a little bit about everything. I never claim to be an expert on anything, but I know enough to start an interview and right. conduct an interview. At this juncture, then, in your career, you're probably an expert on Sonoma County's art scene. Well, I have a long history with it, and, and the paper takes advantage of that sometimes. Yeah. I'm often asked for sources and specific stories. I'm not the only one who writes about the arts. We're all kind of pooled in one newsroom now. And you were the editor for many, many years of that I was a I was entertainment editor for 15 years there. Yeah. And, and as newspapers in general began to shrink and the staff began to shrink accordingly, um, I was an editor without reporters, so I became <laughs> a reporter again. Yeah. Um, but I'm proud of the people I hired during that period, and some of them still write for us. Yeah, I remember Chris Garcia was one of your discoveries. Yeah, yeah. he went to Austin, Texas, and I, I'm not sure whether he's still there, yeah. but um, the last time I saw him was in New York at a journalism convention. But um, Yeah, he and I were theater critics uh, simultaneously. Yeah, well, yeah. he was very controversial. <laughs> he was, yeah. I remember w one of the top people, the, Seattle, or the um, New York Times, excuse me, uh, had received complaint letters about Chris, so he came out to talk to me about it. And I didn't know how to take that. He, we went out for lunch, and, and it, the man's name was John Lee, and he had an office like two doors down from the publisher of the Times yeah. on the top floor there. And, uh, and John, he's a gentleman from Virginia, and we talked for quite a while, and we talked about Chris's style, which was extremely provocative, and not the way I would have written at all. but. Um, I, I have a more spare, sparse style. He was very purple. Yeah, yeah. he was. He was. The people used to say I should take away his thesaurus. But uh, and finally, uh, finally, uh, I said, "Well, John, I, you're here, and I know it's not the only reason you're here. I mean, are you worried?" And he says, "Well, people are reading them, aren't they?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah." And he says, "It's good." There we go. Yeah, if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And well, I I wouldn't. <laughs> deliberately get readership that way. I mean, uh, the one who probably had the most impact of all is John Beck, who still freelances for us. That's right. Well, let's come back to John Beck after this break here with Dan Taylor, okay. uh, our local arts writer, uh, currently with the Press Democrat. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who once took care of you. We're with Dan Taylor, our local arts uh, journalist at the Press Democrat. And before we broke, we were talking about uh, John Beck, who is one of the guys you brought in who really added some color to uh, the local art scene and all that. What, what do you look for in a writer? When you were, when you were bringing this team together to cover the local arts, what was it about these particular guys that, that sparked to you? Well, my mentor was Bruce Kais, who yeah. uh, worked his way up to editor and finally publisher. 
at the Press Democrat, and he's since retired. But he and I would always look at, at the uh, applications together, but we were looking for a voice. We were mm -hmm. looking for something that stood out. Uh, somebody that didn't sound like everybody else. And we were talking earlier about Chris Garcia, and he had a very distinct voice, very purple, I think, sometimes. Uh, yeah. And raised a lot of ire locally. And you're, you said uh, during our break there that uh, some of the local theater people have yet to forgive you for yeah. that ire. <laughs> but he raised the profile of, of theater. And I don't say that as if it were some deliberate ploy that we planned. It was a I, happy effect of... of I agree. The work I, he did. I think his attention uh, kind of made everyone pay attention, <coughs> and uh, to some degree. And I think that uh, the, the reason me and others uh, in other publications were uh, able to write about the arts was in large part to create a dialogue, you know, uh, in response to Chris to some degree. Well, that was what we were all trying to do: is raise the profile of, of the arts. And and Bruce Keis was very much behind that. He was the founder of the of the on cue section on Sundays. I it was a tab that, yeah. that ran for uh, 13 years. Quincy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it, it, yeah. it, it was a pun derived from the phrase on cue, C-U-E. To be in cue, like on the Yeah, line. like on, yeah. on stage. And uh, um, that lasted 13 years. Yeah. And, but, and, but you guys have still, despite the contractions or the changes in the way that local jur journalism functions now, uh, here, there, and everywhere, uh, why is it that arts are still important to cover? I mean, I, I know it, why. I think I know why. But well, we, it, it's part of the identity of the community. Uh, the, the same man from the New York Times that I was talking about, they actually coached us to be more local. A lot of people thought the opposite. But that the New York Times, which then owned the Press Democrat, yeah, would be broader. Which sold yeah. us like three or four years ago. Yeah. But, um, but John would say, I want a sense of place when I pick up a paper. I don't want, you know, I don't want uh, California to look like Mississippi, like Massachusetts. You yeah. Know, that's to. a really good point. So, so the arts are actually one of the few fingerprints a city can yeah. can make distinct. Not everybody has a Molly Boyce or a John Moran or right. or any number of people I could mention. Uh, Doug Jane. I mean, you know, we have so many personalities here who are part of our identity. Do you feel accountable to them? I mean, you must have personal relationships with some some of them. How do you write about somebody you know? I write for the readers, yeah. and and I am I am writing for editors. Right. So, nothing takes place in a vacuum. But, but I have a, a sense of responsibility, I think, to the readers as I understand them. I hear from them. I have my own relationship with them. Yeah. And I, you can't just be a booster. You have no, to. Yeah. No, and I never thought I was. Uh, many people want me to be, mm -hmm. and sometimes I am. You know, sometimes that's kind of a byproduct of what I'm doing. But uh, I used to, in my younger, more blunt days, I used to say, uh, you're not my audience, you're my subject matter, which <laughs> is not very polite, but it's basically true. I mean, but you can't be uncaring about it, uh, community journalism. Yeah, I've lived here for uh, more than three decades. I do know these people, and they yeah. know me. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. there's a relationship there, regardless yeah. of how but personal. Yeah. I, you're accountable to everybody else, and they're not all friends. You know, That's they're true. not all on the same side. So they police each other. You know, if if yeah. somebody thinks I'm favoring someone, or or when I was reviewing. Um, then they would certainly tell me. So have you had, had any like real fallout from a review or something you'd written? Oh yeah, but it's, it's temporary. I don't yeah. keep score. I mean, uh, in this job I eventually have to talk to everybody again or they have to talk to me. Yeah. It's amazing some of the people that I met. My, my son was taking clarinet lessons uh, years ago and his music teacher said, you wrote about a jazz show I did. <laughs> and it was like, I don't know when it was. It was right. like 1982 or something. So, and I said, oh, I don't remember that, but I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> any, any particularly proud moments there, like you know, where, you, where you felt you were able to give a spotlight to something that otherwise would have gone under the radar? Oh, it, oh God, I don't know how to, how to I mean, you must make have a short list. Hundreds yeah. of times, right? Yeah, well, I was proud of our coverage of the transition of, of uh, summer, um, Summer Repertory Theater at the JC, from Frank Slowinski to James Newman. Right. I think James Newman had a very tall order to fill, and I think the fact that we covered him uh, vigorously in the beginning, um, uh, not as a booster, but who is this guy and where did he mm -hmm. come from? He was some, from Seattle, actually. Yeah, but it kept, kept the lens on it, kept yeah, the community Yeah, it's yeah. a very important program to this community, and I argue that case at the paper all the time. It's a, you know, uh, theater audiences don't compare with television or movie audiences or, or sports or, or even pop music, yeah. but, but uh, there are a bunch of minority audiences. And uh, one of the philosophies that I liked about the Times was they, in the early days, before they became corporate and had to do what all corporations did, mm -hmm. um, 
was uh, they wanted a total newspaper. And part of a total newspaper for me certainly means the arts. But I don't think, I think the paper now has is, is assimilated the arts to the point that any news reporter on a given weekend will, might be covering an arts event. Uh, you know, uh, one of our, one of our um, city reporters picked up a story on the Raven Theater right. closing in Windsor yesterday. Yeah, big deal. I had posted something uh, early in the morning and he, he had covered the inception of that theater and knew everybody involved and it was natural for him to, to See, write that Everyone's sort of beat agnostic at this point. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. It, 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 it's a very compact group at this yeah. point. I mean, it's not a skeleton staff by any means. We could, uh, as the Valley Fire shows, we can, we can marshal a forest if we need to. <laughs> but, but it seems to me like a, as there have been changes, one of the things that, that's come up that you have taken on with, with some aplomb is, is uh, using, so, using social media to get a word out and all that. Oh, I love Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it loves you. I mean, you yeah. have a real good thing going there. Uh, well, I use it as what used to be called the man in the street interview. You mm -hmm. used to, as a rookie reporter, I yeah, would be sent it. to the mall or the city yeah. square and just call our people and ask their opinion. And now I do that on Facebook. Yeah, and uh, uh, I've generated whole feature stories. I've done. Uh, I don't interview via Facebook because it's a little cumbersome. But right. uh, but the the start of interviews has started with that, and I've followed up with phone calls. Or I've done whole stories where all the sources came from Facebook. Yeah. Did you ever think this would be part of your your tool set? I mean, <laughs> well, I, I didn't imagine. And I mean, I was a, a big science fiction fan as a kid, so I, I love and I love comic strips. So I I love Dick Tracy and his two way <laughs> right. wrist radio. Which you know? we now so, have. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. he's kind of archaic now, but uh, or or the communicator on Star Trek. I mean, I have a flip phone, and people laugh at me for using it, so I had to buy another one. <laughs> Well, you can't see cartoons on a flip phone. No. Right. right. And you are an aficionado of cartoons. I guess yeah. So. yeah. I was drawing before I could write. And, and my dad was an artist. He wanted to be James Audubon. He yeah. was a naturalist. So he drank, drank birds and... <laughs> yeah. No, and that's what he wanted to be. And I think my mother wanted to be Frank Lloyd Wright. I wanted to be James Thurber or Jules Pfeiffer. I wanted to be a writer who... Augmented it with cartoons. Yeah. Let's come back to that in a second here with, with Dan <coughs> Taylor, our local uh, arts uh, reporter and future writer at the Press Democrat. We'll be right back. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment and that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke, F-A-S-T, fast. And we're with Dan Taylor, our local arts and entertainment uh, reporter and features writer with the Press Democrat. Uh, really uh, an institution unto himself here in terms <laughs> of local art coverage in Sonoma County uh, and with the PD specifically. But one thing I think a lot of viewers don't know is that you have a, a real interest in cartoons and uh, and you actually produce them yourself. And so I know I know our producer John has some images we might see and okay. uh, we'll throw those up as, as we're talking here. You're talking about a desire to be like a Jules Pfeiffer, uh, and who, whose work I really admire. You know? He's a hero of mine. I saw yeah. him speak at the UW in Seattle. Yeah. Oh, when you were up there. Yeah. Yeah. And I later, I later saw him in Nebraska when I was working there. He was doing um, a seminar with Will Eisner. Yeah. What his was it mentor. About, what was it about Pfeiffer's work? You know that that attracted you. Oh, it was just so expressive. The drawing was minimal, and the yeah. and and the writing was expressive. I think one of the reviews called him the best uh, cartoonist now writing. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a great playwright too. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Crawling Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. Little and other things. Yeah. Yeah. And and so he he's able to take that uh, that kind of dialogue, that elliptical sort of. You it's know. the economy of the expression that yeah. I love about cartooning and the impact of words and pictures together. I mean, did you feel you had a point where your career could diverge and you might have gone into? I entertained cartoon? a fantasy of becoming a cartoonist until about my mid-30s, and at that point I became a father. Right. <laughs> and, um, 
and I wanted to make some money right. for a change, although you never really do in this business. <laughs> but I want, in journalism terms, I wanted to do better than I was doing. So I started moving around again. Yeah. Um, and finally wound up here in 1981. Yeah, and, and really, you've, you've so invested yourself in here, uh, in, in Sonoma County, in, in, in the Press Democrat, it's hard to think of you autonomous from it. <laughs> well, I learned my craft uh, along the way. I mean, yeah. uh, I was a, a, a general assignment reporter for the Tri-City Herald in eastern Washington, right. Kennewick, Pasco, and Richland. And so, were you allowed to print cartoons in these papers? Yes, yeah. I've, I've had a cartoon in every paper I've done, although I haven't even tried at the Press Democrat for a long time. Why but, not? Maybe. Well, they have very high graphic standards, and I, uh, it's kind of personal. Okay. My cartooning is kind of personal. I, I'm much more imperson I mean, I'm, I'm a, used to being taking a professional step away from my writing. Right. And I can take coaching and revisions and work with that, and I'm comfortable. I always could. But uh, cartooning is kind of hard for me to do that. And, and sort of looming over all of this, of course, is the specter of Charles Schultz here in Santa, <laughs> Santa Rosa. Yeah, I never tried to show him my work uh, or anything like that. I, I thought that would be tacky, so I never did. <laughs> I remember Beck told me once that he interviewed Schultz and, uh, and he asked him if he still drew the cartoon. And, oh. and Schultz was very defensive about that and then drew for Beck Snoopy uh, in real time. But he had to draw it very large because he was a little, little shaky at the time. And yeah, so, by the end of his yeah. career. I interviewed Schultz a number of times. And, and my relationship with Schultz was mainly as the owner of the ice arena and the producer of the ice shows, which right. were reviewed by the aforementioned Chris Garcia in his <laughs> caustic fashion. And, I can uh, only imagine. So I've yeah. had, I had some interesting conversations with, with Charles Schultz uh, during that time. Did you have to run interference for your writers sometimes like that? I mean, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the job. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You answer the phones and, and you cope with it and you meet people. And, <laughs> um, I, I hired our, uh, our restaurant reviewer, Jeff Cox, who still writes for us. That's right. He yeah. had some very controversial reviews in the early days and owners would want to talk about it. So what's, what's next for you? I mean, what's next for, well, the arts coverage in Sonoma County and your place in Well, I'm going to do this indefinitely. I have no plans to do anything else. Uh, I'm going to write it wherever it goes. I think yeah. it'll be more of an online presence. I think uh, some of the old forms of, of reviewing and having a staff critic may have changed forever. Yeah. Um, uh, everybody literally is a critic now on right. Yelp or or. Or even uh, Twitter. Yeah, yeah, or any of the social yeah. media. Uh, people don't, it's very democratic communication. Uh, historically, newspapers have been autocratic. Mm -hmm. Rich press barons dictated the <laughs> truth to the uh, uneducated public, you know, and all that. And that's ridiculous now. Yeah. And that's not how it is. So, um, so and I like that. Yeah. Uh, I like the ongoing diamondism. I like being mediator, you know, of, of, sort of this a curator conversation. Too. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I think that AJ Leaving said that um, a good newspaper is a community in conversation with itself. There you go, and that's the goal. And, and newspapers, in even the Press Democrat, are changing. I mean, I, the, the broadsheet used to be this wide, and now it's this wide. And I would imagine eventually, print in general, uh, it, you know, everywhere is going to evaporate, and we will be, we will be almost entirely online. Uh, well, certainly more so. I, yeah. My analogy that I like to use is that in the 30s and 40s, or even the 20s, jazz was mainstream music. Mm -hmm. Then it was rock, and now it's hip hop. And right. um, jazz isn't gone. There are jazz clubs. There are jazz records. There are jazz festivals. So Lots of jazz. So the Press Democrat is the jazz of local yeah. media. Well, <laughs> and I also like to, to think about the early days of radio. Right. Um, radio uh, uh, was the dominant form before television and has not disappeared. It's as much part of community life as ever. I think of it like uh, dinosaurs evolved into birds. You yeah, know, so yeah. Newspapers have evolved into tweets. Uh, lighter uh, and faster, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that can soar. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that you need people who are trained to listen mm -hmm. and to check things and to question things and to talk to many people of many points of view and try to synthesize that and I know there's a lot of cynicism about journalists having a bias or an edge or an angle or a slant or, uh, or, a, or a voice yeah yeah and and you know that's really a matter of personal judgment uh, if you agree with someone then that person's obviously telling the truth you know but <laughs> but I think I think the, the the only way to get at it is 
diversity, to have so many voices and so many questions and so many different takes on the same subject that you can make your own choice. So in a way, I mean, a, a, a vision for local arts coverage is to just have a place where everyone can share their opinion and you can help lead the conversation. And I would like to do that. I, yeah. I certainly would like to see much more coverage. It breaks my heart that, you know, yeah. that 40 out of 50 things that are sent to me, I can barely do anything with. But the web makes it easier. Uh, the items are short. It, I can, I'm a fast writer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm actually able to do a little more now than I was for a while. It's a lot more flexible, but I don't think it's going to be, I don't think we're going back. Right. We're going on to something else, and I'm not quite sure how it'll evolve. I, I really don't want to control that. I want to follow what's useful to people. Yeah. No, I think that'll effervesce organically somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Th though we can't go back, we were definitely going forward. So, yeah. 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 Well, it's been a tough time for the arts and arts education be because of funding. and. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, I think that the, uh, theater and, and music and art locally have learned to survive, even with less media attention. Mm -hmm. um, they're building the the web works for that too. And they're they're and building they're their own base, making their own media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating, man. Well, Dan, come back some other time. We'll, we'll wrap some more. Yeah, we just barely that. got started. I know, here. it just goes by so fast. <laughs> We're with Dan Taylor, our local arts and entertainment writer and features writer for, with the Press Democrat. A real pleasure, sir. And we'll Thank do you. This again. Yeah. Mm -hmm.